Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome back for another Squadcast. I'm Camille Salzer Hadaway. Joining me, as always, is Caboose. We have Steve. And this week, we have Malik joining us, one of our writers from squadstate.com. And of course, the four of us are going to break down a lot of news that happened over the course of our break last week. How are you guys doing? Are you guys excited to get into this news? I'm so excited. I'm is ready. It, you know, having a week off, I'm, I'm energized. I'm ready. Let's you can't really see it. You can't really see it, but if I move aside, you know, uh, I'm yes, definitely ready. I, I I'm definitely like... ready for some things. <laughs> you know? Yes, Caboose is prepped. Uh, let's run down what we're going to be talking about. Of course, right behind Caboose, you have the Mortal Kombat official trailer reactions, impressions, maybe some Easter eggs, maybe Caboose found uh, within watching it. I'm excited to learn about that. Plus, we're going to look at more video game movies because 2021 is, I feel like, the year of a lot of video game franchises going to the big or small screen. Um, yep. And we're getting more news of that. So we're going to run that down. Plus, BlizzCon Online uh, defines virtual gaming conventions again, okay? And Nintendo Direct, this was a huge uh, piece of news last week, so we're going to mm -hmm. break down uh, what was in the Direct, hype that we have, and our impressions, okay? Remember, everybody, watching from home, you could let us know what you think on all these topics and more through, well, the chat right here, as well as on our socials at squadstate.com. Let's start the conversation because we have a lot to talk about. Kaboos! You've been anticipating for a very long time <laughs> Mortal Kombat movie news, and finally yes. you got it last week. Yes. Yeah, I, I feel like for, like, I don't even know how many episodes now, at the end of it, you always ask me, hey, what you got going on? And I'm just like, oh, you know, waiting for the Mortal <laughs> Kombat trailer to drop. And it's finally, <laughs> finally, uh, it happened. We got to see the Mortal Kombat trailer. I believe on the 17th it happened. Um, and since then, everyone's had the chance to watch it multiple times. I've, I've watched it a little more times than I'm proud of. But, uh, you know, How I, many I'm, times have you watched it? Uh, Are you okay? You that's besides break? the point. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> definitely put more hours into watching the Mortal Kombat trailer than I did playing Death Stranding. Um, but basically, like, I'm really... <laughs> <Wow. laughs> that's wow. I gotta get one. I gotta get <laughs> one. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> No, but I'm really, really looking forward to that trailer. Honestly, I, I had really high expectations. There were a lot of people out there who were like, you know, it's a video game movie. There's like, we haven't heard about anything for it. And it comes out in two months. Like this could be really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know a lot of people had yeah. their expectations very low. Of course, myself being a Mortal Kombat fan, really looking forward to this film and, you know, being excited about the cast. I was looking forward to this trailer and I don't know. It, it, met my expectations honestly it it may have even exceeded them tenfold because it was a damn good trailer yeah. like that set up some really <laughs> cool things the characters look awesome all right Everything let's talk that's... about yeah let's talk about the trailer and kind of yeah. like what we see like can yeah, we yeah, describe yeah. a little bit of it if someone's listening you know on their drive right okay so so the trailer opens up the trailer that's playing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you're if you're watching on the stream, you can see a little bit of it on the on, on the B roll. But essentially, you know, the trailer opens up, and it's sort of a, an explanation of our new character that we have introduced in this movie, which is my biggest uh, take back, I guess. Like the, the biggest thing, mm -hmm. my drawback from this film is uh, is Cole Young. Uh, he's yeah. a brand new character, fully newly created for this film, and is supposed to be kind of the central protagonist of the film. Um, and we get a little bit of information about this birthmark that he has. That's the Mortal Kombat dragon, which apparently so lame. So what is, a terrible line! I know. Super on the nose. Oh, I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the birthmark. Super. What do you mean? Oh, it's a mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody he, he's it. Accent, birth. Okay. Yeah. So like, it's super uh, cheesy um, and super like on the nose and a little mm. like a, a little departed from what the games are supposed to be like. But um, but then it starts getting into stuff like, for instance, we saw the stuff with Sub Zero at the very beginning of the trailer with Jax shooting the shotgun, and the the pellets are like the the blast from the shotgun just freezing, yeah, and just yeah. barely reaching Sub Zero. That stuff is super cool. We learned that Jax loses his arms because of Sub Zero. Yeah. A lot of really interesting stuff shown there. A little bit of that that feudal Japan stuff that I'm really excited about. It gives us a glimpse at the showdown between Scorpion and Sub-Zero 
when they're both kind of just becoming those characters, mm -hmm. you know, probably going to see the death of Scorpion's family and stuff like that to set up that vengeance and that hatred for Sub-Zero. And I think overall what I'm really excited about, although I don't know how they're going to do this and if they're going to set it up like the games, is that Sub-Zero is like the villain. Right. Like yes. Shang Tsung's the guy pulling the strings. But in terms of the one who's involved in the action, the one who's, you know, the guy you got to watch out for, Sub-Zero is the main antagonist of the movie, which is pretty exciting. And they've re they really put a good showcase on his powers and his abilities, and they're not holding anything back. If you watch the original Mortal Kombat movie, or even if you watch the web show, a lot of stuff is held back a little bit. They don't, yeah. they don't lean super far into the crazy abilities and the powers that every character has. You know, you get a little mm -hmm. bit from Sub-Zero, you get a little bit from Scorpion, but that's about as far and as it Sonya. goes. And then, and then, and then maybe Reptile. We see Sonya's, we see Sonya's um, uh, what's her, her blast in oh, the yeah, trailer yeah. as well. But I'm, I'm, ta I'm talking yeah. about the original movie, right? From the 90s. Uh, they were, oh, okay. yes, yes, yes. They were a little more reserved and a little more held back on the, the crazy, like, fantasy aspect of Mortal Kombat. Um, and this movie seems to be leaning like all in on that. They're not trying to hide the fact that Sub Zero is this meta human with ice powers and that right. Scorpion, you know, teleports with fire. <laughs> you know, like they're not trying <laughs> yeah. to hold none of that back. And it's sweet. It all looks really, really cool. They're given 110% on every single one of the Mortal Kombat characters. But then I, I'm finding myself in a position where every time it cuts back to Cole Turner or Cole Young, whatever his name is, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 let's come back to Sub Zero Scorpion. Come on, come on. Yeah. Like, and I hope that the movie doesn't give me that same feeling. Mm -hmm. It yes. does I look like this Cole Young guy. They're setting something up with him being connected to Scorpion in some way. Yeah. I don't know I what that's gonna be. Right. But maybe that'll be interesting. Yeah. Probably not, though. I feel like Cole is going to be the weakest link of this whole entire movie. Just how they opened up with that whole birthmark thing. Oh, so cheese. So yep. cheese. Okay, because it's like, oh, he's always had this birthmark. No, you're the chosen one. It's like, come on. Okay, you're you're not even any of the games. You have not been chosen. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, but we do, I do like actually, you see some of the artifacts. So you see um, Liu Kang's ancestors when they go to that scene and you see that artifact there with um, Liu Kang's ancestor in the in Mortal Kombat. Um, oh, you're talking about the uh, the great Kung Lao. The great. The, oh, the, sorry, Kung yeah, Lao, yeah. Yeah, Kung yeah, Lao. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yep. I do have to say, like, maybe 30 seconds of this trailer. The first 30 seconds of this trailer is like lukewarm. I have it pulled up here. And then when we start going into, you know, the Mortal Kombat characters, like you mentioned, Caboose, that we know and love, and they show that they have their fatalities. We hear the voice, right? right? Finish yep. him. Yeah. It's not as epic, though, I have to say, as yeah. the first movie. I, I mm. feel like there was so much power. It was like just ripped from the game um, in the first movie. I feel like this yeah. time when they had yeah. that finish them line, they're trying to make it seem kind of normalized. I, I will say it. This is, this is nobody's fault on the movie, but because of what Netherum did, bringing back Kerry Tagawa as Shang Tsung in the game in MK11, and then doing a whole story expansion where Shang Tsung <laughs> is once again, like the main villain of Mortal Kombat and just letting Kerry Tagawa just, be Shang Tsung one last hurrah. Like, I do miss it. I do exactly. miss him as Shang Tsung because I feel like nobody can outdo Kari Tagawa as Shang and Tsung. That, and that's the thing. Like, when I see Shang Tsung, I'm like, oh, okay. And then I hear the voice and I'm like, no, it's not right. This is not how it's supposed to be. Yeah. But, you know, it, like you said, I think it's just the timing of, you know, getting the trailer, you know, from playing a game that has the original Shang Tsung from the movie, who does such an amazing job with those lines being so animated right. yeah. on how he yeah. says it and delivers the line. It's like, it, it's just like fan, <laughs> it's fandom right there. Just hearing it. 100%. I just melt. Um, how about a, a Steve Malik? What are your thoughts? Let's start with Steve. Yeah, I, I was a doubter. Uh, I mean, we kind of talked about this like weeks and weeks ago, but I, I was super skeptical on this, likely because we hadn't seen a trailer at this point at that point. But um, yeah, this trailer sold me mm. right away uh, that like the way it was all set up, like that first scene uh, with uh, Sub-Zero and, and Jax 
awesome. Like great way to just set up the, the trailer. And then yeah, you get into if the trailer yeah. was just that, I'd be right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Was, you just needed to show me that. And if theaters, if I was comfortable going to theaters, you'd have my ticket, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. A- absolutely. And then yeah, you kind of dip down when when you get Cole Young and those awful lines, but then you get those <laughs> awesome vignettes of the, all the characters showcasing their powers and everything leading up to like the fight between Scorpion and Sub Zero. And that's when I was like, okay, this has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. Because going back to like a couple of weeks, I said that this this movie is going to really live or die based on its choreography and the fact that it doesn't hold anything back in terms of like the gore and violence, yeah. in my opinion, anyways, because that's so ingrained in like the franchise itself right yeah. so uh, if it, it, i think even if the story is generic or whatever i think as long as they can nail the the fights and the se- those sequences this movie is going to be at least good to great yeah i agree if the fights are good if the gore is there fatalities all yeah. that stuff like i can forgive bad dialogue or exactly maybe maybe a cheesy plot you know mm-hmm Right. And I mean, you stole well, the words right it, out of my right? mouth. <laughs> yeah, it does. And like, this thing could end up being as bad as Birdemic, or it could be Whoa. the best, <laughs> or it could be the best Mortal Kombat movie. Either way, I'm still going to enjoy it. As long as the fights are good, and, and even if the, the fights aren't good, I have a feeling that our newer technology with CG and like animation and things will be able to step up the film in a way that they mm-hmm. weren't able to. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm just excited. Like, I love Mortal Kombat. I just want to see another movie i'm interested in how this whole dialogue is going to turn out with this new cole turner cole young i it seemed very generic but at the same time like it's hollywood you can't really expect them to put you know uh, an original That's story <laughs> into mortal kombat I, I, there's so many other stories within mortal kombat i think they could have gone with i think there's like so many different like perspectives and timelines that they could visit but uh, they chose the generic kind of wrap everybody in. I think yeah. what hurts though is like they could have done all that and just made a Johnny Cage. Like, and it wouldn't have been a yeah. problem. Literally, even if they didn't, they wanted to ditch the him being an actor thing and go with the MMA fighter. Johnny Cage is the perfect name for an MMA fighter who fights in a cage. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, it writes itself, you know? Yeah. Now, and, do you I think know, I, I like that, that that's setting up for something at the I end? Would- Wait, wait, hold on. So, do I think it's setting up for maybe Louis like, Tan's character is Johnny Cage? Yeah. Like, do you think that like a post credit thing is like, you know what? I'm gonna take on this this I, title. I, I would have believed that, but then now I'm wa- I watched the trailer and they're heavily hinting between some sort of relationship from Cole Young and yeah. Scorpion. Right. Yeah. So I, because I, of that, it's like maybe he's a son, a descendant. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, like, I feel like a, a part of me is still hoping that Cole Young is Johnny Cage. Like, maybe Johnny Cage is just his stage name and, you know, he changes it after. Um, mm-hmm. But after watching that trailer, I agree with you. There is something going on with him and Scorpion. And I don't know if that is the best thing. I don't want more lore. Or Scorpion. I agree. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm very content with their lore. I love that it's, you know, they team up after a while. Like, I they have so much lore. I don't need any more. <laughs> like, I do don't want to descend it. Do you think all. he's going to take the mantle of Scorpion? Or oh, I, I got he's it. just going to be a descendant? Because <laughs> they, they love, hey, Star Wars did it and they made a lot of money. Hollywood loves doing it. The, taking the mantle oh, of the God. story arc. You don't no. get someone that has as much screen presence as Hiroyuki Sanada playing yes. the like title character of Mortal Kombat to then have Fair him enough. replace. Like I love yeah. Louis Tan. I think he's a great actor. I love his commitment to like doing his own stunts and all that stuff. And I'm sure even as Cole Young, he's going to be able to bring a good performance. You know, he'll he'll do a good job. I don't think he's like going to be a bad actor. Or, like there will be any problems from him in that aspect. Um, it's just, I agree. I don't want them to do something like the passing of the torch or anything like that. And to be honest for me as yeah. well, uh, as a fan of the lore, as a fan of mortal Kombat, the, the whole point of Scorpion becoming Scorpion is that he is on his own. Yes. He has right. nobody. He loses mm-hmm. everything and he has to like regain his humanity, you mm-hmm. know, becoming Scorpion, becoming the demon. Like he literally sells his soul, you know, like he loses everything. Right. 
Um, and so for him to potentially have like a long lost son or a descendant or some sort of like still like family tie to somebody would uh, would take away a little bit, I think, from the character. Um, but I guess we'll see. I don't want to jump the gun. I don't want to be too judgmental because, again, everything else looks so good. Right. Um, and it looks very faithful to the games as in terms of just nailing the tone and understanding what Mortal Kombat is. Mm. Um, so if they if they do a good job with that, then I think I can be a lot more forgiving about some things like the Cole Young character or what they might do with that or some bad dialogue or a lazy mm -hmm. plot, whatever. You know, I just I, I look at the last 30 seconds of the trailer where Scorpion and Sub-Zero are fighting and Sub-Zero like slices Scorpion and turns his blood into a dagger of yes. ice. And I'm like, just do that yeah, for do two that. hours. Don't right. <laughs> and we're good. We're or good. even when he like creates the dagger out of ice. Yes. yes. It's, oh, so it's so cool. Good. And you it's know, so those cool. are that that's kind of like that callback. So there are a few callbacks to the original movie within this trailer, you know, when Sub-Zero freezes the gun, uh, that's a full scene in uh, the original movie. And I love that. Oh, but yes. you're absolutely, yeah, you're absolutely right, Caboose. Like they just need to keep doing all these fight scenes. Even when you say, see Melina, like, oh my God, that, that, yeah. you didn't like Melina's look. I liked Melina. I liked that, it a lot. I would you? It. Let me. Would you know what's Melina if it weren't for the sigh? Uh, well, I would say that. Yeah, that's the that's problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. I will say there's like a shot in the trailer where it looked like she had like full open mouth Melina. Right. So like maybe it's like a thing that like it's like a reveal moment, um, or like mm -hmm. a power that's like activated or something, which I guess like I can buy, but like it's not like. It's not really Melina, for being honest. <laughs> I'm looking it's, forward to. No, it. I don't I want. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to fully judge, but we'll see. I will say though, this movie as well. Like, so the first movie. Let's talk about the first movie for a bit because the first yeah. movie really tried to put Liu Kang as the protagonist. Liu Kang was the poster boy be. for a really long time. Netherrealm was eh. Netherrealm was pushing <laughs> him um, for a while as the poster boy until they saw the popularity Scorpion and Sub-Zero had with the audience. I yeah. love that this movie completely recognizes this. We get two really long fight scenes between Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Yeah. Um, even like, oh, I love seeing the kunai on the string for Scorpion. Like, yep. I yeah. love that they did that. Yeah. So you kind of understand why it's on the chain for him. Um, so, good. so good. I just don't know how I feel about Sub-Zero being the villain. I I'm kind of worried, you know? But like, see, so how That's how it is, though. I, I get that, but... From this perspective of like, I still like the story of Scorpion, like kind of being ruthless. But okay, yeah. so so here's here's like the the story of Mortal Kombat, and I guess it's a if maybe it's considered a spoiler if you because they might do this in the movie. The story of Mortal Kombat, of course, that Sub Zero kills Scorpion's family. Scorpion's like, I'm pissed. Turns into Scorpion, uh, becomes the demon after like just like essentially selling his soul, right? Mm -hmm. And he becomes mm -hmm. the demon, just like the spirit of vengeance almost. Um, and so in becoming Scorpion, then he hunts down Sub-Zero, kills Sub-Zero, who then becomes Noob Saibot, right? Um, turns out the person, the puppet master, pulling the strings, doing all this was Quan Chi the whole time. Sub-Zero never even actually killed Scorpion's family. It was Quan Chi who did it. Um, and so I don't know if they're going to do that in the movie. I actually doubt it. Um, because I think what they're going to, if they want to franchise it, what I'm hoping they're going to set up here is that Scorpion does kill Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero becomes Noob Saibot for a second movie, and we get introduced to Sub-Zero's brother, who is the good mm, guy. Yes. Uh, mm. yes. Um, because but, then that could create an interesting dynamic. See, even how the story works, you have Scorpion hunting down Sub-Zero. He's seen as the villain. Yeah. I would have liked that approach. You know, where you we all know the lore of Scorpion, but Scorpion is such a good villain character. The demon you, you're Scorpion, saying you don't want to cheer you don't want to be cheering on Scorpion 
I, I want to be maybe at the end. I, I, okay. The fact is we all probably are going to know if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, how the story is going to go, unless they do a really big twist and they have to do it right. Right. Yeah. So I say, let's just start with the premise that, you know, sub zero is kind of like the good guy. I like that, that kind of, um, fooling of the audience in a sense where yeah. you're cheering on sub zero because you're like, Oh, this demon is like, hunting him down you know yeah um and scorpion just being so intimidating for that of the two i find scorpion more intimidating um than sub-zero that's why for me if i see him on the big screen i i don't necessarily want to cheer him on like you said throughout mm. the whole movie i would want it to come near the end where they kind of have this revelation, they go through, okay, well, he killed off my whole whole village, right? Um, and this is vengeance. Then you're like, oh, snap, it's going down. They do a flashback, you know, to that moment, maybe that fight that we saw in the trailer, the first fight, and then we get, like, that main fight near the end of the trailer. Yeah, that could be interesting. I do like the idea of Scorpion having, like, a moral ambiguity, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you, you see him as a character walking a thin line, um, and in a very like gray area, like nothing's very black and white for that character. Um, I like that, but also at the end of the day, like Scorpion is this like damaged individual who was essentially forced into becoming this demon. And I think what they should do is try and like try and try and lean into the the character arc that they do in the games, where he finds peace again. You know, and he, and he, he has an understanding because a part of it comes from the fact that he killed Sub-Zero and recognized that he killed the wrong guy, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and he did that because he was just like blinded by rage uh, and didn't think clearly or didn't like look at things in a more broad perspective. And so he finds peace in like an understanding that he needs to and, and he can't just be this rage that that is Scorpion. Uh, yeah. So if they do that, I'm into that. And again, like Hiroyuki Sonata, is, that, that is the perfect casting. It is so good. And I love, um, I can't remember, I think it's Tadanobu Asano, I think, playing Raiden, who looks yes. really good in the movie as well. Mm -hmm. um, the actor playing Kuma is like ripped out of the game. Like straight up <laughs> one to one ripped out of the game and put into the movie. Um, and I love Ludi Lin as Liu Kang as well. For, for me... I would have preferred Liu Kang to be the main character because that how, that is how it is in Mortal Kombat. Like the poster childs are Scorpion and Sub Zero, of course, right. but Liu Kang is the protagonist and Shang Tsung is the antagonist. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully they have enough to do for the Shaolin monks in the movie to kind of still give you that feeling. Um, yeah. And they look so good. Every single one of like the Mortal Kombat yeah. characters look so good and are presented so well that it really excites me. Maybe aside from Melina. Um, but like Sonya looks great. Jackson, the arms look great. What about you know, reptile? Like, oh, reptile? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh about reptile. that's a bad what one. We think is reptile. Godzilla Jr. So you get this um, it's not even Godzilla Jr. It's like Godzilla going through puberty. Oh my gosh, it's horrible. Um, but you get this glimpse of two char possible characters. So you see Reptile or three. And then people are speculating, you know, this puff of smoke that appears maybe Noob or maybe Smoke. What are your thoughts on that, Caboose? I would love for it to be Smoke. Uh, I think it's too early for them to do like the whole Noob Cybot arc if they wanted to. Um, I think it's just Sub Zero coming out of some sort of portal that's created by Shang Tsung, mm -hmm. and that's the effect. Um, if it's smoke, okay. cool. That's a that's a sweet surprise um, because I would love to see some of the some of the ninjas. I'd love to see Ermac, Smoke, a more traditional reptile if it were to be possible, um, and all that fun stuff. Tremor, like all the crazy different Mortal Kombat ninjas would be awesome. And I know the third character I think you're going to mention. Um, this one is like for sure, no doubt about it. Cabal, who we see Liu Kang fighting against in the trailer. Uh, you see the hook sword, you see the burn, you see the gas mask. Good. He looks Pretty, really good. Yeah, it looks really, yeah. really good. Um, so that just tells me that there's because he didn't get they didn't really give a spotlight to Cabal. You only see like the back of him, and then you kind of yeah. have to make out that, like, okay, you see the hook swords and everything like that. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we're gonna be seeing more characters revealed. Um who they're going to be, I don't know. Yeah. Um, 
who we want. I don't know. Like, I'm still on the fence with this movie. I, I want to see this movie. It looks great. But it's just, this could go wrong so quickly. Um, one of my sure. things, too, is I don't want them to overload us with mm-hmm. with characters right? i agree if they mm-hmm. if they can give us like five to ten have their impact in the story be <laughs> meaningful max like because if you if it's just an <laughs> overflow of like all these characters and you only give them 10 20 minutes to you know say a couple lines do a quick fight and that's it you're gonna feel sh- you know cheated i would rather have a 30 minute sub-zero scorpion fight you know than see a bunch of small fights i agree mm-hmm. yeah 100 it's like it, it reminds me of a suicide squad when they introduce katana and they're like oh yeah she has a sword that you know sucks up souls whatever and on to the next thing <laughs> yeah. Yeah, There's yeah. so many characters in there. I, I would much rather see like a contained uh, roster that they can mm-hmm. actually delve into. Yeah. Um, I um, also want to mention, go- I, I just want to mention yeah. real quick. And then I also want to throw you guys a question if you don't mind. Um, Josh Lawson as Kano, like eating up the scenery. Oh, oh, so, yeah. good. so good. And I was really concerned because I was like, oh, he doesn't really look like Kano. You know, like, come on. You're, just, you're not going to give the metal eye. But like, from the the Kano wins, and then the the line that he says after that with the heart in his hand, I was like, right. okay, okay, he he got it, he yeah. got it, perfect. <laughs> uh, and then I want to throw to you guys well, a question. What's that? Sorry to interrupt, but when we get the humor we're going to be missing from Johnny Cage yes. through Kano. Yes. I think so. yeah. yeah, I think so as well. And then I wanted to ask you guys, what did everyone think of the get over here? Loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Uh, I liked it, but okay. it didn't have that impact for me. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it doesn't have that, like, really? like it was just like, get over here. I want, like, get over, get here. over <laughs> here. Like, it needs to be aggressive. <laughs> like, a demon is, like, <laughs> demanding you to come over here. Like, it needs to be aggressive. I And that's no fault on the actor, or the editors, or anything, but he no. needs to have that umph. Like, if it doesn't, the character's going to fall just, flat. There's Exactly, and I think it's just was directed maybe to say it remember uh way back when we got our first look of the mortal kombat movies my biggest concern was the fact that everyone's outfit was like black and gray they were trying to you know do the early 2000s thing of making everything look sci-fi and colorful downplay it to reality and i feel like maybe the get over here was a director's choice to kind of be like okay we want we want those call outs but we don't want it to seem so out there right i so I agree. Like I liked it. Um, I actually, honestly, the more that I listen to it, I enjoy it. But there was only one person on planet Earth that can say "get over here," <laughs> and and I think it's his birthday today. Is and it? that is really the legend Ed Boon. Yes, Ed, the Boone. man who created alongside John Tobias Mortal Kombat. He is the one and only guy who can perform that line the way it's meant to be. He is the guy who's done it through every Mortal Kombat game. And I would love if they did like a last minute just to give him like, Ed Boon deserves some part in this movie. Sure. You know, like, right. it, and yeah. if that's going to be his sort of cameo is an 80 yard get over here line, then I'm down for it. You know, give I love him. Hiroyuki Sonata. I, I love, I, I honestly enjoy the way he says the line. I think it's cool. I don't mind yeah. it. Um, but if I were to have it my way, Ed Boon deserves that line. That's his line. Yeah. yeah. And that's another missing link of the involvement of Ed Boon something, you know, that, so, that nod so to the, sad. the guy who's really made Mortal Kombat what it is. Like, yes, yes you know, no. he's a co-creator of the game, but he is kind of like the celebrity of Mortal Kombat when you think of the team behind it, right? So mm-hmm. I'm hoping through the movie do do some sort of nod i agree i, yeah. I hope yeah. so something yeah. to like to reference at least ed boone because he he deserves it you know mm-hmm. like this is his baby this is his franchise alongside john tobias who doesn't get enough credit for his contribution to mortal mm-hmm. kombat sure um and so i hope i hope so i hope so because ed boone's the man and by the way happy birthday to ed boone <laughs> <laughs> Boon. I will go to chat for a second. MF Sky says the samurai outfit looks cool, even though he's a ninja. I think he's talking about Scorpion. Yeah. Um, you know, before he turns into. Well, I'm trying to think the sam his outfit in when he's actually Scorpion. 
It's not, it's more it ninja-like, is, but I, uh, no, I right? think it it's, is more samurai inspired because it's like a plate of armor on the chest, the bigger uh, shoulder gauntlets. Right. Yeah. 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 I know. I've noticed that it looked a little bit more samurai than it did look like a uh, ninja. Sub-Zero is a little more Sub-Zero like, you know, more ninja. Yeah, thinner, you're right. more, more ninja. And also Sub-Zero just straight up looks like his costume was based off the Night King. If we're being completely honest. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I can <laughs> like, see that. Yeah. I'd like to imagine a lot of inspiration for how they wanted to present Sub Zero as the villain of this movie was based on the Night King from Game of Thrones. Sure. Because that's like yeah. even him walking through the town with his hands up, controlling the ice. I'm like, that's the Night King. Like, <laughs> that is the Night King. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. But the I Night mean, King consulted on the Mortal Kombat movie, definitely. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Night King does have a presence, though, that I would love to see Sub Zero have. That kind of like when you first see him on the ice and he's walking, yeah. and you see the silhouette. Like that's the mm-hmm. kind of presence that Sub Zero should have. Like, I agree. Even if they, if, I hate saying this because it doesn't always work out, but even if they kind of dull the other characters to give those two a little bit more emphasis, make them feel like mm. they're in their own league, I would be okay with that personally because it seems like that's what the marketing has leaned into. Mm. And that's kind of always been the kind of highlight of Mortal Kombat for me is watching those two face off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And I think for uh, a I want to give fans. one more shout out uh, to the to the director, Simon McCoy, who... Yeah hasn't really done anything first time like, yeah this is his first feature film which is awesome like that's quite the undertaking so i agree congrats yeah. to him for for being able to to land this mm-hmm. yeah definitely and with that we're gonna get over to our next topic that was i was like, get, get over, over here yeah <laughs> here. uh i i need a train like you caboose i feel like you've been saying that <laughs> since you were a little baby you're like this little infant you're like get over here get over here uh, yeah, all yeah. right <laughs> 